My name is Ananta Chandrakasan, and I'm the conference chair for ISSCC. It is my honor tonight to introduce Professor Rinaldo Castello, who will give some research perspectives and advice to our students. Rinaldo received his PhD from University of California at Berkeley in 1984. In 1987, he joined the University of Pavia, where he is now a full professor. In 1998, he started a joint research center between the University of Pavia and SD and was its scientific director until 2005. He also promoted the establishment of several design centers from multinational IC companies around Pavia, among them Marvell, for which he has been consulting from 2005. Rinaldo has uh, been a member of the technical program Committee of the European Solid State Circuits Conference since 1987 and of the International Solid State Circuits Conference from 1992 to 2004. He was the technical chairman of ESRC 1991 and the general chair of ESRC 2002, also served as the associate editor for Europe for the IEEE Journal of Solid State Circuits from 1994 to 1996. From 2000 to 2007, he has been the distinguished lecturer of the IEEE Solid State Circuit Society. Um, Ronaldo was named as one of the outstanding contributors for the first 50 and 60 years of ISSAC. He is co-recipient of a number of awards, including the Best Student Paper Award at the 2005 Symposium on VLSI, the Best Invited Paper Award at the 2011 CICC, and the Best Evening Panel Award at ISSCC 2012 and 2015. He was also one of the two European representatives at the Plenary Distinguished Panel of ISSCC 2013 and the summer 2014 issue of the IEEE Solid State Circus Magazine was devoted to him. Uh, Professor Castello is a fellow of the IEEE. It's really an honor to have him here tonight to give some advice to our students, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Ananta. Uh, Ananta, I guess, asked me to just briefly uh, say a few words about some of the things that I did uh, when I was younger. I guess he, he couldn't find anything useful that he could mention, so he said maybe I can invent something. Uh, basically, I started sort of with the early switch capacitor filter at uh, Berkeley. I don't remember even the time. I think it was something in 77, 8. I can't remember exactly. And I was there when, when analog CMOS was starting to ship up. A Paul Gray was mm, help, guiding us, at least in my case. Uh, at that time, uh, switch capacitors were probably coming out a bit of fashion and more the A to D. Uh, were, were, were coming up, and I was sort of on the, uh, at, the, at the end part of that, and then if I have to think a few things we did, the one thing we did there that remained, I think, significant was the finding the sort of fundamental limit in the switch capacitor filter that then were kind of reused over and over, not exactly, but they were still being the base for the more general other analysis and fundamental limitation of filters, uh, probably if you go and, and scratch it down even in, in the VCO and the A to D and, and things like that. Uh, more recently, uh, I think the, the use of MOS varactors uh, to tune uh, VCO was sort of one of the things that we started together with, with the group of Tom Lee in Stanford. And I think we were among the first one, probably the very first one to implement it, maybe not the first one to propose the basic uh, uh, architecture of wireless that is now becoming total uh, standard that has a, a transconductor and, and a passive mixer and then a, a baseband. And so those are a few things that I was trying to think, what did I do some, somehow useful? And that's maybe that there was some use to that. Okay, so now let's go to the talk. I have to say that uh, it's a great honor for me. At the same time, it's a bit intimidating. Usually when I do this thing, I'm very relaxed. I don't know why. But in this case, somehow having the responsibility of giving a message uh, that might influence people make me more nervous that if I simply had to report things that I have to do. So you probably see me not as 
as relaxed as I should. So anyhow, let's get to the, to the presentation. I hope now it's the, usually I never know which one is the forward or the back. Okay. Um, uh, here is sort of, uh, my presentation is very much like a, a um, typical presentation. People can talk freely. I cannot uh, do that. I, I have to stay in my field and try to give you a, a structured presentation. Otherwise, I, I won't be able to do it. So th what I try to do is try to give you some guideline. Now, take guideline always. Probably the first guideline should be be very careful about believing in guidelines. But I mean, given that I have to give you some guideline, this is what I, I, I try to come up with. So here is a list of things that I will try to talk quickly. Uh, as they told me the, the like usually, like, like for a priest in church, the best uh, quality is to be short. So I, I'll have to, to speed up. So uh, use intuitive understanding was one thing that I, I thought was important, but not oversimplify. And I'll make an example, try to make it fast. Learn from other application. Leverage technology again, but be, remain critical. And then broaden your know-how and be visionary, but remain critical. And then I have this slide. It's a very final slide. It's a kind of a preaching slide. I try not to be too much of a preacher, but I had to, where I say, take some guiding principle and try to, to and I'll, I'll give you a few examples. Okay, so the very first thing here is going into circuit thing and says, intuition is crucial, okay? And, but, but intuition can lead you to mistakes. So intuition can go one way or the other. So to, to, to prove that to you, maybe, I, I kind of created this kind of a thought experiment where we have one, two, three, uh, op amps, and the first one is a Miller, simple two-stage Miller. The second one is a nested Miller, and the, the, the third one is a nested, double nested Miller. Uh, but what I did, I did almost like in Italy, they do this like playing with the three cards, you know, which one is the, which is the queen. Uh, so what I did here, I left the same output stage. So the output stage is the same for all of them. But further than that, as I increase the number of stages, I change the gain for each stage such that the uh, frequency response of three Ks is exactly the same, almost exactly the same. That's a, a spy simulation that showed that you can have the same gain at DC, the same bandwidth, although the structure is different. So then, then my question is, what's the output impedance and how that varies with frequency? And then uh, the way I calculate the output impedance is shown there on the left, and, and I say I'm taking a output stage, which is the same for all of them, and I have to multiply to, compu to compute the admittance actually, not impedance, so that doesn't matter whether one is the inverse or the other. Uh, I take the, the, the GM of the output stage and I multiply uh, the GM of the output stage for the gain from the input to node A. Now, a misleading intuition uh, could tell you I have the same output stage for all of them, I have the same gain from input to output from all of them, I should have the same input to A gain for all of them, so I would expect the output impedance or admittance to be the same for all of them. Actually, if I ask the simulator, that's what I'm getting. So their intuition with no simulation could have been very dangerous. Now, is there a way to make that instead the result of some intuitive, correct intuition? And the way I say, I say the correct way of being intuitive is to say, how do I measure output impedance? I could do it by injecting current and measuring voltage, or by injecting voltage and measuring current. If I decide to inject voltage and measuring current, injecting voltage is like applying a voltage source, which, in a, which is an AC ground. Okay, If I had injected current, it would not be. If I have an AC ground, all my Miller capacitance are now grounded. So if you ground the Miller capacitor, and then the slope is going to be 1 for the 2 stage from input to A. Uh, sorry, 1, 20 dB, 40 for the, th for the 3, and, and 60 for the, for the uh, 4 stages. So, and, and the poles will be moving like that. So looking at the output impedance in one way or the other actually could make it in much more simple. And being very quickly at believing it to intuition could have gotten you completely out of, of, of track. So the message here, and maybe I was so quick that you couldn't really follow me, but I'm not trying to teach you circuit. I'm trying to tell you, be careful. Intuition is crucial. Okay, You always have to verify your intuition, but if you wanted to design something, you can't to just ask the simulator. At least you cannot now yet. 
and, and tell him to, to, to change things. You have to understand what the critical point to be constructive, but be careful about the intuition. The next step was learn from other applications. Okay? As we get into something else, and I made a few s silly examples there, uh, we enter in new things, and oftentimes those new things can really benefit very much from things that you know very well about. For instance, a VCO uh, topology can very much be linked to a PA topology. A, a TDC topology can be very easily linked to an ADC topology. And, and, and a sigma delta, although it's a much more complicated in all nonlinearity, but in an AC small signal analysis, it, analysis can be linked to op amp topologies. And more recently, narrowband wireless transceiver can be explained by n path concept. The point is, there is a lot of knowledge that we have, and we can often reuse that knowledge into new things instead of really starting from zero, okay? So that's another message I wanted to pass on to you. The other message was learn from uh, uh, leverage the technology evolution. The most classical example from somebody like me, they used to tell us, oh, come on, you people talk about switch capacitor, but switch capacitor was made by Maxwell. The only problem, Maxwell didn't have the technology uh, to make it work. And in fact, uh, even when bipolar technology was available because of the fact that we didn't have a good switch, at some point, something clicked and something which was very old that was made possible by the, by the technology. There is many other examples, okay? Uh, digital intensive is very, very fashionable, okay? That's another thing that I may want to warn you. Watch out about fashion sometime, okay? Fashion can be dangerous. Background calibration, digital PA, those are very fashionable things. Time domain processing, uh, it's ADPLL, very good thing. A VCO-based ADC, a bit more recently. Current mode operation was fashionable sometime in the past. And I kind of revisited with what I call pi processing, and, uh, uh, and I will discuss with you a second. But I wanted to say always be critical. And here I'm going to stir some controversy, but I guess probably stirring controversy is probably OK. Uh, digital intensity design is good, but we have heard about software design radio, software defined radio for ages. So there's still no software defined radio, any of the chip that, uh, of the uh, things that you carry in your pocket, on on, on your bag. Okay. At the same time, ADC based uh, wireline transceiver. Certainly, there is many of them, but there are applications which, if you can do it in an analog, you're still going to win because you have 300 of those things to put around. So. Don't rush too quickly to the fashion, okay? Uh, if I want to apply to my own uh, experience is that when we finished, when I finished my PhD, CAD was exploding at Berkeley was the center. And I was told, you analog designer have a few years of life and then the machine will take over. So you better start learning high level language. Uh, I didn't learn high level language because I knew that was wrong. I just I didn't have the characteristic, and I said I did too much work to change. But definitely was the wrong uh, uh, view, OK? So don't rush too much. Time domain processing is another uh, important thing I said. Uh, but here I'm stirring some controversy. Time domain processing, uh, soon there will be paper coming out, the one paper from one of former students of mine, Antonio Licidini, that proves that time domain processing, sure, uh, Delay has gotten so much better, but if we're talking about dynamic range, you can prove that it's not better than voltage domain at the fundamental level, okay? So be careful about making certain conclusions, although there are applications where it can be extremely useful. And then the current mode. The current mode, uh, uh, I have my view, and the current mode, uh, it was fashionable some time ago, maybe you're too young, but. If you think about current mode filters, I'm strong enough to say they don't exist in IC because the state variable that you need when you filter, you need memory, and memory implies state variable, and the only state variable that we had at that time was capacitor voltage. So no matter what you do, you ended up having to have voltage, okay? And the principle holds. The, the current can go from zero to infinity. The voltage can only go to two volts. Uh, at some point, the state variable had to go to two volts, and the, and, the, and the fundamental limit was still again that one. So careful about that. But 
More recently, I was fascinated by the concept of pi processing, which is a current mode process. So there is good in potential. And the example of pi processing there made intuitive is that a pipe, an MOS transistor is a pipe. And is in principle a non-leaking pipe, while well, a bipolar transistor is a leaking pipe. Means that whatever comes on one side exits on the other side. Now, if you have something for which you can avoid any leakage, if what's coming in here comes out there, there can be no noise, no distortion. Because noise and distortion are something that are at the output, they were not at the input. In fact, in the model, only if you have leaky path, which is shown like that in the equivalent, you can have turbulence and addition of noise and distortion. So if you could process in a, in a uh, pipe way, then you could be having no noise, no distortion, which is a dream. Now, can we, but we always have to be critical, okay? So can we do anything with that, okay? Now, uh, if I take a, I, I took the example of, ideally I want something for which the current goes in and then goes to a ground. That's a pipe. Now, if I take a wireless receiver, there are something like the mixing operation is a natural pipe process operation. There is no memory, there is no leakage involved. In principle, only uh, non, let's say, parasitic leakage, but I don't have to do anything. But if I take power amplification, then Amplification power takes voltage, so, and worse, if I take source matching or if I take filtering, then by definition I need to leak something or I need to have memory because filtering means I have to take something out and not let it go to the out. So those two seem to be not prone to pi process. However, we can broaden our view and be visionary and maybe we can force into pi processing some of these concepts which seem to be um, inconsistent, like for instance, why do I have to match? You know, matching is necessarily a leakage and therefore cannot be a pipe, but without matching, in, ca in some cases, if the system allows, if I'm courage, if I have courage enough and vision enough, and the example here is like a, a, a common base uh, with, a with a transformer coupling where we change the the gain of the transformer, and we go try to see what's the gain, the noise figure, and the, uh, and the IP3. And you find out that uh, although the maximum of the gain correspond to matching, both the minimum of the noise figure and the maximum of the IP3 correspond to a non-match pipe-like mode with the maximum flow of current. So you have something that apparently is inconsistent because you get better noise and better dynamic range by not matching. At the same time, and I'll be fast here, uh, I said in a filter there is leakage, the fundamental limit is KT over C, and I would look at the paper long, a long time ago, but KT over C is the total noise. Now if I care about the noise in some part of the spectrum, like when I do again a wireless receiver where I care about the noise in the band where the signal is, I can create situation where the noise is shaped in such a way that overall is KT over C, but the part that bothers me can be much better than KT over C. And even more so and less intuitive, if I take, a, a, again, a transceiver and I put some interference, which generally are out of band, generally, unless we have full duplex, and I intermodulate them in such a way that they come in band, I invite you to think, because this is really interesting and probably counterintuitive, but if you make the, inter the, the, mm, the interference term, the intermodulation term, to fall in band, it will follow exactly the same high pass behavior as the noise, because uh, th that interference term cannot go inside the pipe if there is no leakage. But at that frequency, the pipe is not leaking, so the interference doesn't know where to go and doesn't go anywhere. And you don't have the interference. It seems miraculous. Okay, so now, uh, the message here is it's, uh, very confusing, but the, <laughs> the idea is sometime by uh, being uh, working a bit outside the box, we can even overcome some that are fundamental limits. Now, the very final one is, uh, if I have to leave a message which is more of a preaching message is, and this has been experience of my life, 
And I say this, one of my students there is Andrea, uh, who's telling me, you've always been telling me this thing for years, and I have to say, I got inspired a lot by Paul Gray when I was a student on some of this point, but this remained very strong in my mind. I think you need to have some real strong rule that you have to abide to. And I made just a few examples. Everybody makes his own. One is you are the, this is a phrase that still remains in my mind because Paul Gray told me before going to ISSCC, you are the true judge of your work. It doesn't really matter if the committee tells you you're good, but you know it's not, okay? You cannot fool yourself. <laughs> and at the end, you are in front of yourself every time that you shave in the morning or you comb your hair if you have. Uh, but there is some consoling thing, you know? And I have experienced over and over in my life, in a long run, truth comes out. There might be moments in which you say, oh, guy, that guy is cheating. It's not Oh, I get mad, but I think my experience is that in the long run, substance comes out. The truth comes out. It's, it's a real experience that I've touched. Teach with your example. Credit people. Credit contributor that you have taken from. Don't try to pretend that it wasn't like that. And take criticism, which are constructive, well. But also, this is all very strong uh, almost uh, uh, fundamentalist, okay? But remember also to understand other point of the, of the people point of view. I remember myself as a student having a completely different point of view of a professor. And you always measure yourself with this. Okay, thank you. 